Okay, let's talk about let's talk about Virgil v Walter van Buurdonk. Um this seems like a bit of a cut and dry topic. I don't really see why this is causing such an outrage online, but I guess because Virgil tends to divide opinion reg regardless of what you may think of him in general, I guess he just yeah, I guess cuz he divides opinion people are, are up in arms, but essentially Walter van Buurdonk um a storied member of the Antwerp Six and somebody that I think a lot of people in fashion have a lot of respect for and somebody who kind of really does their own thing doesn't really kick up a fuss really for the most part you don't really hear his name in the headlines he kind of goes about his work pretty quietly uh puts out some interesting um clothes and accessories and has a very unique point of view when it comes to fashion and it's probably referenced a lot by uh many I guess younger designers because someone like a Walter would be an example to younger designers that you know that you can keep that kind of youthful expression and that sort of carefree attitude to fashion and not treat it as seriously as a business as some other people would do and, and sort of have fun with it um so I'd imagine he's probably referenced a lot with kids coming up in fashion schools and stuff but for the most part he just does his own thing and kind of keeps his head down and you know that's about it but I guess Virgil's latest show that he did kind of sparked a bit of ire online and people kind of saw the re the references or the links to the work that Walt has done and I guess with Virgil's linking up with that um stylist is it Im what's his name Imran something so I forgot his name but I guess with Virgil linking up with that new stylist he's probably injected a new um a new point of view maybe kind of freshen things up again for Virgil maybe made him uh get become more inspired uh kind of pull from different places or just probably kind of asked him some interesting questions so this is probably a consequence of this right when he kind of is linked up with an actual capital f fashion person in this new stylist he has now working with him at louis vuitton it would make sense that he would kind of uncannily uh start maybe copying or imitating some of the stuff that water's done in the past um but i guess the the kind of the controversy is that Virgil denies it. Virgil's friends are coming out and backing him and saying that he didn't do anything wrong and he's a black guy or this sort of stuff, blah, 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 blah. But for me, it looks pretty cut and dry. He obviously did copy a reference from Walter. I think it's fair to say Virgil's been quite honest and upfront about the fact that he does reference and copy and he doesn't really see anything wrong with it. Um, he kind of, uh, that's the kind of school of fashion or design that he comes from, right? Referencing and taking a remixing of different things out there and sort of distilling it in, in, in his own point of view. But I don't really see where all the controversy is with all this stuff. I really don't. Like, he obviously did copy it. He did it in his own way. People seem to like it. And it is what it is, isn't it? But this is an article here from Hypebeast. It says, Virgil Abel refutes uh, the claims of invitation. It says, Louis Vuitton's playful spring summer collection was intended to be a celebration of creativity in the quarantine and owed to ide ideation that stood tall amidst the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. Instead, the affair was... Uh, it said the affair had exploded with social media for uh, as Anto Six member Walter Van Beerdonk uh, lambasted the fashion house and artistic director Virgil Abloh for his perceived imitation. Van Beerdonk um, and his fans pointed out elements of Louis Vuitton's Spring Summer 21 presentation, including stitched up plus uh, figures and asymmetric eyewear that coincided with the Royal Fashion Art Antwerp's professor's previous collection, specifically Van Beerdonk's 2016 and 2018. Some eagle eyed supporters took steps further, alluding to. to uh, the fur the, the through lines of the inflatable jackets and deconstructed tailoring and of course looking at it you can tell straight away that this is stuff that could be referenced from Walter and I don't see the argument here like this is from a guy that has told us categorically that he will copy everything out there he doesn't see anything wrong with it right he does it in his own way presents it in a different way and people seem to like it but there's no denying that there are similarities or you know eerily similarities connecting those two things right like these two collections that like there's no way you can say that's not the case especially the glasses like jesus christ look at this right like this is pretty cut and dry like and you have to also be you have to let's just like, be honest too like we've never seen virgil present work this way he, he doesn't like you know for the most of the stick that virgil gets is because he tends to kind of uh deviate from presenting his work in a kind of quintessential fashion way it tends like you know most of it looks like his a haberdashery um you know stitch patchwork of loads of different references from all different all different places there's no kind of theme that kind of ties it all together it's just a random collection of clothes you know done in his own sort of way and you know people tend to like it but 
this was maybe the first collection I've seen of Virgil's at Louis Vuitton. Maybe it was the inclusion of this new stylist that he has on board now, who I'm going to try and get the name of because this is not it. I forgot his name now. Louis Vuitton. Stylist. Virgil. What is his name? I think it's Ibrahim something. Da, 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 da. What's his name? I think it's Ibrahim. Let me see if I can get up on here. Da, 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 da. Search. Come on. Ibrahim. I'm pretty sure it's Ibrahim something. I want to get his name right. <clears throat> da, 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 da. Yeah, that's it. Ibrahim Kamara. Yeah, I'm sure. I knew it. That's the guy, yeah. So, Virgil's got a new stylist. His name's Ibrahim Kamara. And I'm sure he's the person that has kind of elevated the Louis Vuitton. Because when I saw the pictures, the images of this new collection anyway, it did really strike me like, oh, wow, this is really impressive. This is probably the best stuff I've seen Virgil do in ages, isn't it, right? Um, and it's no coincidence that now he's linked up with this this guy who kind of everyone seems to be really hyped on in the fashion industry now at the moment. Um, his, his work has really been elevated to another level, right? Those are That's kind of a quintessential fashion thing, right? You need to have these great relationships, these great partnerships between the designers, uh, creative director, fashion directors, and the stylists really do make uh, the house go pop or whatever place that you're designing. So it's no, there's no surprise that this guy would come in and suddenly people are now referencing, you know, Virgil kind of ripping off somebody from the Antwerp Six and somebody, especially somebody as, ab as obscure from like maybe you know the general public's point of view as Walter Van Burdick. It's, it's, it's no surprise, really, in it. But there's no really argument here. The clothes do look quite similar to what Walter did. It is what it is. It, like I said before, like nothing that Virgil's on prior would ever tell you that he would ever be possible of evolving into this sort of designer you know most of the stuff is just a question of clothes even the, even the shades like that's not something that will maybe the shades are probably something that Virgil could argue that he's a part of his DNA a part of his code right they're messing about with the proportions that could be something but it's pretty cut and dry for me in that regard and it continues here it says I think this is the quote it said Virgil did, did it again this is not just copying this is using my world my ideas colors signatures cut shapes as his collection mood board said Van Buren so the hype piece on August the 7th he said one day after the collection premiered he said he paid a huge amount of money to be an artistic director Ooh. oh he is paid I thought he said he paid Jesus Christ he has paid a huge amount of money to be an artistic director and he has unlit possibilities to work with anybody in the world um, he could have asked me for a collaboration tell Louis Vuitton to contact the real thing god damn he said on August 12th less than a week after the initial um, scuffle Abla tweeted screenshots of the Louis Vuitton runway show highlighting a model wearing a clutching teddy bear and similar manner figures that graced his 2021 runway show so i'm guessing this is basically his way of basically telling people hey i didn't steal from walter i referenced the uh the uh, my own house collection which you know is a bit of a stretch really i think this is one of those kind of um uh this things where when you get caught out you just try and search for some sort of proof to kind of you know back up your point but we know for sure he did copy from walter and it? it is what it is isn't it um whether or not he should be doing it is another thing but i guess because people don't like virgil anyway anything he does is always kind of looked at with a different sort of eye, but for him to suggest that somehow, I think, yeah, this is a tweet I've got up here on the screen. This is coming. Virgil needs to be a bit more sensible. This is him self-referencing from Louis Vuitton, August, Louis Vuitton 2005, because somebody's carrying a teddy bear, and the model's carrying a teddy bear, and he's saying that's where he referenced it from. Come on, Virgil, man. Come on. We know that isn't true, brother. Let's go back to the article. It says here, the same day Kanye reappeared on Twitter to issue countless stream of conscious tweets, two of those cited the recent LV controversy citing a challenging Diet Prada and Van Beerdot to come get us all. High Diet Prada, high water, come for us all. Lulz. It's funny that you haven't heard an absolute peep from Diet Prada regarding this though, isn't it? They do not want the smoke. I guess after all that stick they got during lockdown um, with some of the um, accusations of um culture vulturing and i think they posted that was it that yay yeah i think it was a yeezy gap merch that was like um make america great again and stuff people kind of basically turned on diet prada so now diet prada don't want the smoke they don't want to smoke with minorities they're just kind of going you know they're trying to stick stay out of this as much as possible and everyone and it's funny because everyone's calling for them to stick the boot in on virgil but they're like nope no thank you we don't want that smoke we want to keep our little instagram page going and it continues here it says late on august 13th ablo directed addressed the matter itself he said Walter Van Buren's claims are completely false um, he said they are tape field attempt to discredit my work the inspiration for my collection comes with a DNA Louis Vuitton Pacific 2055 menswear show and it is clearly outlined in the notes distributed to the press when the show began this is yet another instance of false equivalency to try and discredit me as a designer 
It's interesting that he's saying that though, because he always he never really gave us the impression that he wanted to be regarded as a fashion designer. But now he's very conscious about people discrediting himself as a as a designer, which is which would make sense, isn't it? When you get beat up as much as him online, there probably is a there probably comes a point where you're like, you know what, enough is enough. You you motherfuckers need to put some respect on my name. I know you might not like what I do, but you have to respect my 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 work. Do you know what I mean my uh, le- level of effort that I put into it? Because there's no denying, man, for somebody as for somebody that people regard as not that talented, for him to be a position that he's in now and doing what he does, he's obviously doing something right. So I guess he has to stick up for himself in that regard. But come on, man, you can't tell me this has been referenced from Virgil, like, from Louis Vuitton 2005. This is obviously, you know, taking cues from what Walter's doing. There's no shame in it. Like, again, he's the guy that says that he self-references anyway. Um, it's like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, it continues here. Ba, 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 ba. He says the show notes did not directly allude to the 2005 runway show. There we go. But they did explore Abloh's uh, desperate influences um, in painstaking detail, mentions of nuance, irony, and recognized influence. Uh, 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 what's that? Abooted? Abooted reflections upon the upcycling of ideas, presumably intended as a nod to spring 20, 2005 collection. Elsewhere, quotes from the philosopher uh, Kierkegaard and influential band leader Sun Ra prepped a 40 plus page page note document later explaining the concept and backstory of Abloh's Zoom with Friends mascots. Uh, these figures were realized in the spring 721 runway show by way of aforementioned plush figures inflatable sculptures. Oh, but this is not, come on man, this is this is a reach. If you express us to believe, that's a reach. And then of course um, the Virgil Defense Squad came out swinging, you know, all guns blazing, defending his honor um i guess the first being uh denim tears came out and said something i think this is from fashion demics he basically came out and called uh called out walter by his name and said you don't touch my virgil guy he gives me free jordans <laughs> i don't know man i don't know some of this stuff is just a nonsense really you did copy it is what it is you keep it moving but this is denim tears on fashion demics he basically says the following it says denim tears responds to a troll in the comments uh, uh on virgil's behalf says uh, so this is a quote it says uh, them to his quote on twitter says the following if you're a woman or poc or an lgbt take and manipulate what you want from the canon of white male art all you want a lot of it is was ripped us from, from us anyway and if it wasn't it was and if it wasn't it was is shoved down our throat as a standard above all else so manipulate and flip as you like which is you know you could just replace it and say everyone should take from everybody that's you know great artist still um we know that quote you know my my favorite artist Pablo Picasso was one of those people that kind of you know said that as well and then somebody in the comments of that post where he basically you know because I'm always you know I'm always people that people that screenshot their own tweets and upload them onto instagram are special type of people so you know you deserve a bit of stick for this one and it continues it says someone replied to that tweet and said you're gonna make virgil bust inside the way you're riding him so hard which is funny and he says not before walter's phallic headdresses appropriate from africa tribes do hop over to my insta stories for more info which is you know him trying to ride for his man which is i guess admirable but the only issue i have with all this sort of stuff is that these guys only have stuff to say when it's stuff to do with fashion and clothes. When Kanye is freaking out and essentially sabotage, intentionally, if you believe the stories, sabotaging Joe Biden's campaign so that he can segue votes over to Trump, they don't say a, a damn thing. When Kanye's out here losing his mind in public, they don't say a damn thing in public. But whenever it's Virgil and people are accusing him of copying some trainers or a bloody hem or some belt or a bloody inflatable toy in a jacket, they all come out guns blazing, like defending him, like, you know, like as if he's their father or something. It's very, very bizarre very very odd but again i understand you know if he gives you front row sheets at his show he gives you off-white jordans um you get to talk to him on on snapchat or, 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 or i don't know or whatsapp whatever the, these things these guys are always kind of hyped about i get the understanding of it and you know maybe it's just a clout game so you just have to always protect your your person that gives you the most clout points again fashion demics covered a lot more of it here um says so the following uh what Monday is water van being dot co size the blatant drip off virgil is accused of another more screenshots of him copying the work that he done prior which you can't really deny i think looking at it it does quite it does look quite cut and dry but again if you're a fan of his maybe you say oh no it was original but it's like virgil's never been original though that's he's basically claimed to fame in it 
copying and pasting, cutting and pasting and putting it in his own light, and it? it's not really a bad thing to say, really. Um, maybe because it's Walter and he's a, he has his own um he has his own issues he has to deal with his own work right i think tribalism is one of those things right he has this weird fetishism with um the black male form which can get a little bit weird um i guess so maybe that's part of it but yeah there's no you know what i mean look at that there's another one i hate copycats what of van verdict went he went hard on, on virgil and he was going in He's really, really going at him. More examples of work that are similar. The glasses are, that's cut and dry, the sunglasses. There's no real way to kind of mask that. But again, sunglasses, much like apps, are probably the, one of the, the most copied um, segments or sectors in fashion. People tend to always rip off each other's designs in some way, shape or form. Come on, man. Come on, guys. What are we doing here? Again, no one's saying no, Walter uh, um, owns these um, inflatable puppets or these dolls, whatever, but let's be real. Like, let's be real. Let's be real. Uh, sorry, let's continue again. Another one here. Oh, again, that's the same one. And I think that's about it, isn't it? Da -da -da -da. More copying examples. What are we going to say here? Diet Prada's not getting involved. And then, yeah, I guess that's it, really, in that regard, that story. There's nothing more to add, really. Um, Virgil's friends are defending him because, you know, they have to defend him because he is Virgil and they are who they are. Um, but I don't get the defense. I think it's pretty cut and dry. And if he has, if it has to, happens to be an uncanny resemblance, so be it. We apologize to put our hands up. But for the most part, Virgil's told us amongst uh, loads of times over the years that he does like to copy. He does like to take from things, um, reference from history. He has his own archive of personal items that he buys that he references from. Like he's always on Instagram. He, his collections even look like an Instagram. You know, that's probably part of his maybe downfall. The fact that he spends so much time on social media kind of maybe negatively affects the work that he puts out, right? It's not really informed by living um, in the same way that, you know, a Kim Jones collection is. Again, not fair to compare the two because, you know, one's a trained or experienced designer. One has maybe only got 10, only 10 years, they're saying, in the industry, which isn't a lot. Uh, considering that you know Kim Jones has worked within the fashion industry or infrastructure for a far longer time than that maybe he's still on his training wars but it's not you know it is what it is the guy copies um, um he got called out he got called out for it it was pretty blatant and we just keep it moving but you know it's interesting to see his defense squad coming out defending him and then you know trying to make it into a race thing which I'm not sure why it is but hey um, I guess it's easier because Walter Van Beerdok happens to be white. If he wasn't, then I, and I, I'm interested to see what the conversation would be about because there were allegations prior of Virgil taking from, you know, younger black designers who came to Inter. I'm not sure if that even was even proved right, but I remember it was like a yellow anorak um, that was covered in like a spray paint and stuff that looked very similar to what this kid done that came and kind of, you know, asked Virgil for help and insight. And then obviously we know what happened with Virgil and the, and the cover for the smoke thing. So there's always been a bit of controversy when it comes to him creating his work. There is this thing that happens. I don't know why it always happens to him, but you know, it, there is, you know, where, where there's smoke, there's fire. There is obviously something going on there in his studio and how, how he approached design. That's obviously rubbing people up the wrong way. Or maybe it's just his presence in general. Maybe it's just the fact that he's just made it at the level that he's made it um considering the lack of um skill compared to his peers that he has just rough people out the wrong way and never gonna accept it i don't know but it was interesting i remember when raf simmons said that really spicy thing about him i mean that that was a bit odd because you know it's not as if raf simmons and virgil have the same customers right i, I wouldn't imagine so it's they're not competing for the same retail space even right um one is a, a real legend in menswear and has his pace solidified in the fashion hall of fame and one person's coming up and you know getting their start it's not as if you know what i mean it's not as if like virgil's demna or anything um Again, not a slight on him, but I, I never really understood why Raf came at him so hard. But that's maybe indicative of um, systemic issue there. Maybe some unconscious biases, um, unconscious um, racial discrimination. I'm not too sure. Who knows, really? But uh, it's interesting to see this battle play out in public. Um, it's a bit, you know, it's a little bit G.A.Y., to be honest. You know, people arguing about inflatable toys stuck on trench coats. But hey, this is the fashion world that we live in people get agitated very very easily <laughs> oh god almighty what can you do